What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video we have the Evolution Cup Battle of Spice. And if you played or watched any content in this cup, you'll know there really isn't a lot of variety, but these 20 trainers brought some of the craziest middle stage evolutions I've ever seen in the Go Battle League. So with that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. Which middle stage evolution Pokemon would you like to see get a move update next season? Let me know in the comment section down below, and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, we've got a level 50 Vibrava leading into Haunter, and like a lot of Dragon Breath users, he probably can just shield once and fully Dragon Breath farm down Haunter, because Haunter is a very glassy Pokemon, so despite Ice Punch being double super effective, we can win the one shield scenario. Of course, we haven't thrown a charge move yet, and the opponent comes in with a Piloswine. That is really difficult for this team, so we're going to go for the Sand Tomb, grab the debuff, and then go straight for a Flying Press, and this can do huge damage with the defense drop. The opponent lets that go through it nearly one shots them and at this point we probably can't afford to shield our pikachu yep gonna let it go through avalanche will take us out but i think one dragon breath might ko here so we might come in with the vivara and we do exactly that we get the dragon breath arm down and the opponent comes in with a vigor off now we're going straight for sand tomb once again the opponent is going to call the bait this time but we should put them into range where one grass knot will be enough to ko now our skip bloom is only 1103 cp this is level 50 as well we tank the body slam though the opponent doesn't go for the rock side honestly we probably would just barely live a rock side anyways but now we just have to make it to the back-to-back -back grass knots going for the first one this should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent and we're able to outpace the vigor off to charge move number two grass knot coming through taking out the vigor off and we're able to take that game so going into the next battle, we see a Fracture into a Piloswine, so not an ideal lead. Going to say swap into our Gerda, and the opponent comes in with a Shadow Dusk Ops. Now, this is unfortunately not a very good matchup. We're going to let the first move go through. The opponent is going to throw straight away, going for the Ice Punch there. I think they will have to throw another Charge move to get rid of us, so we're going to go for the Stone Edge, and Stone Edge does big damage to the Dusk Ops. They're going to throw the next Charge move straight away, so we're happy to let that go through. Ice Punch will be KOing from this range, but we can come in with the Fracture and get the Dragon Tail farm down. The opponent comes back in with their Piloswine. We're going to go straight for the Dragon Claw here. Dragon Claw will be no shielded by the opponent. So we swap into our Porygon 2. And we are just getting straight hard countered in this battle so far. Going to go for the Tri-Attack. And we do get the defense and attack drop. Which is pretty huge for us. Because now we can shield this up. We will be able to go for another charge move. The opponent goes for the Body Sam here. And this will threaten to KO. And if not, it will put them into lock on farm down range. It actually does take out the Vigor off there. The opponent comes back in with their Piloswine. At this point point we can probably just no shield and come in with our fracture and go for a full dragon tail farm down the opponent makes it to a last second charge move but they're not getting off back to back avalanches so we correctly shield this up we get the dragon tail farm down and we're able to take that game into the next game, we've got a shiny Shadow Machoke. I don't have one of these, or even a Shadow Machoke, so unfortunately, we do have a Purified Machoke in the graphic, but we're going to go straight for a Cross Drop, which is a legacy move, by the way. You have to use an Elite TM for that. We're going to swap into our Shadow Haunter, taking huge Dragon Breath damage here, but we're going to shield up the Aqua Tail. The opponent swaps into their Piloswine. We're going to overfarm quite considerably, go straight for the Shadow Ball here. No messing around, and Shadow Ball one-shots the Piloswine. They come back in with the Shadow Dragonair, and we are probably going to come in with our Shadow Kadabra, assuming we're running Confusion, as we can Confusion farm them down, but the opponent does make it to another charge move, so going to use our final shield, they go for a Body Sam, we can get the Confusion farm down, and the opponent's got a Golbat in the back, so the opponent makes a huge mistake there, over farming, could have just gone for the Poison Fang straight away, taking us out, but instead, they throw it way too late, and now one more Confusion takes out the Golbat, we live with one HP and a Dream, and we're able to take that game. Internet's game, pretty tricky lead, but the opponent's going to swap into their Vigor off. We can align our Lampant here and actually try to use Shadow Lampant recently. I have to say, it was a really, really bad Pokemon, so let's just see how this battle goes. We're going to go for a Flame Burst, which is an awful charge move. Flame Burst does grab the shield at least. At this point, we're probably going to have to double shield to maintain alignment here. They go for a second Rock Side. Can we get the Ember Farm down before they make it to a third Rock Side? I believe this should just be a Body Sand, which will be double resisted, and it is just the Body Sam, so that's good for us. They come back in with the Graveler. We're going to go straight for the Energy Ball, and Energy Ball does get shielded, unfortunately. We swap into our Pilot Swine, not so sure about that, and as well, we go for high horsepower after the Incinerate damage registers, so 
ideally could have overfarmed a bit more than that and as a result the opponent is able to outpace us to the charge roof here rock blast will be taken out the pilot swine we've only got a break send left this is not looking too good for us and we are going to hopefully outpace them to a side shock here it ends up being a cmp tire which is the best case scenario for us as side shock does quite considerable damage in this matchup but unfortunately a rock blast will be taking us out it's all up to the lampard and two embers barely KOs the Graveler, we live with one HP and a dream, and we're able to take that game. In the next game, we see Vigoroth in the lead, so this isn't that bad for us since we are going to be resisting the charge moves. As well, the opponent swaps there, catching a side shock onto their Shadow Golbat. What an odd decision by the opponent. We're now able to fully Metal Claw farm them down. They come in with a... Charger bug there. We go straight for Side Shock once again. Now we're going to swap into our Porygon 2. Can just safely let this move go through. They probably will be able to swap back into their Vigor off at some point, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to go straight for the Tri Attack. Tri Attack from this range will not quite take them out, so we get a few more lock ons, which will allow us to make it to another Tri Attack, although the opponent is going to throw their energy. So Body Sam coming through will be taking us out. We can just safely come in with our Purified Nid Arena. Going to let the first move go through, of course. We've only got, well, we've got both shields remaining here, but we can very easily live a body, Sam. We're now going to go for a Poison Fang. Poison Fang debuffs their defense. They're not using their shields yet, so saving their shields for a little bit too late, I think. Now they are finally going to use their shield. We come in with our Shadow Metang. We are going to, once again, let this move go through. It is the body, Sam. We get them very low. We're still not going to shield here. We might even try and two shield flex up against the opponent here. Can we get the two shield flex? We are going for it here. The opponent going to fire off the body sound we live there and we get the poison sting farm down and we're able to take that game so going into next battle, I do not have a Vanillish to take a snapshot of. So we've got the Vanillux, I believe that is in the uh, graphic. But anyways, very spicy Pokemon. They're going to go for a Poison Fang, lower our defense, and then they swap into Dusclops and we can come in with a Bite Pupitar. Now, unfortunately, we are part ground, so we are going to take super effective damage from Ice Punches. They're already at another charge through, so going to have to shield this up. Unfortunately, Bite, not very good at generating energy, so we still have barely only just made it to one crunch. And I don't know if we're going to double shield in this matchup. So we go for the crunch, we get the defense drop, but the opponent will be able to make it to yet another Ice Punch, taking out the Pupitar there, which is not ideal. We do lose alignment, but we've got a Seedra in the back. We're actually going to come in with the Vanillish, get the full Ice Shard farm down, and let's see what the opponent has in the back. Probably not going to come in with the Golbat. They come in with a Vigoroth. Of course, it's a Vigoroth in the back. We're now going to come in with our Seedra. We probably can live this, but we're going to shield it up, actually, as they go for the Body Sam, and we should just barely outpace them to a Dragon Pulse before they make it to the next Body Sam. Dragon Pulse grabs the final shield from the opponent. They're going to throw their body sand pretty much straight away. And at this point, we have a charge we've loaded. Going to throw it immediately into the Vigoroth. Icy Wind will be enough damage from this range to KO the Vigoroth. And can we outpace the goal bat? We are barely able to do so. Making it to the Icy Wind on the CMP tire with a Poison Fang. And Icy Wind takes out the goal bat. And we're able to take that game. So going into next battle, we've got a Quaxwell into a Shadow Dragon Air. So we are running Wing Attack and we can throw Aerial Ace. So it's not that bad. We're not getting completely walled like some other water types would do. But we're going to shoot up the Body Sam here. We're going to over farm in this matchup. We're actually going to go for a Liquidation here. Liquidation is resisted, but they're probably going to shield. And it does, of course, have a chance to debuff their defense. Unfortunately, we don't get it there. So we're going to go for the Aerial Ace. It doesn't quite take them out, but we're actually able to Wing Attack farm them down, which is pretty big for us. Although... Switch Advantage doesn't look like it matters too much in this scenario because they've got an Ivysaur in the back. We are going to let this move go through. Body Sam going to do huge damage to the Fracture. Very glassy Pokemon. We're also going to go for a Night Sash here, which doesn't make any sense because Dragon Claw would do much, uh, would do more damage and the boost wouldn't make a difference there because the counter took us out. But anyways, doesn't matter. We grabbed the final shield from the opponent. We're going to go for a full Ember Farm down, getting there just before they make it to the next charge move. And now we can go for a Flame Charge with the Breaks in, boosting up our attack, easily Ember Farming down the Ivysaur, and we're able to take that game. So going into next battle, we've got Roselia into an Alolan Graveler. Shout out Alolan Graveler. And as well, the Graveler that we're running is Kanto, but it is not Shadow. But I actually didn't have a regular Kanto Graveler to take a snapshot of. So once again, slightly wrong in the graphic, but 
don't worry about that too much. We are going to see the opponent came in with a charger bug, which is a very, very odd decision by the opponent, but we're able to fully rock throw, farm them down, shielding once, and we have a Stone Edge here to throw into the Vigoroth, which would have been a much better counter to our Graveler, but we're not going to complain. We're able to grab a shield back from the opponent. We come in with Ember Shellgon, which is a very interesting move to run as the fast move for this Pokemon. The opponent is able to outpace us to back-to-back -back body slams here. We're actually going to shield this up, and we are going to be able to make it to a Twister. Unfortunately, Twister is a pretty rubbish move, but from this range, Actually, it just grabs the shield anyway, so not that bad for us. We're going to come back in with our Roselia here. The opponent's going to go and fire off the Rock Side, which does ever so slightly more damage than a Body Sand, but it allows us to fully farm them down. And now we can just fire off a Petal Blizzard. And Petal Blizzard takes out the Shadow alone in Graveler, and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, we've got a triple shiny team, I do believe, with shiny Magma in the lead. Unfortunately, running Karate Chop, which is a decent fast move, but unfortunately, of course, it is going to be resisted by the Ghost Typing, double resisted in actual fact, but the Flamethrower does huge damage to the Shadow Dusclops. We are going to no shield the first move. They go for a Fire Punch, which kind of tells us that they're running Fire Punch and Ice Punch. Otherwise, I don't think you would run Fire, fire Punch over Ice Punch in this meta. We're going to swap, hopefully catch the Fire Punch number two, but it is an Ice Punch this time around. So good play by the opponent there. We are going to see the opponent comes in with their Vigor off. We're going to shield this. It could be a Rock Side. It is just a Body Slam bait, which is unfortunate, but we can go for a Dazzling Gleam and Dazzling Gleam is going to do huge damage in this matchup. The opponent lets that go through, probably expecting an Aerial Ace or an Ancient Power. At this point, we can just let the next move go through it's just a body sand which we do end up living and let's see what the final pokemon is going to be the opponent's going to come in with a primate so not ideal as they do counter farm us down there but we're going to come in with our quilladin we're going to swap trying to catch the move and we do perfectly catch onto our shiny magma night slash will be taking us out we're probably just going to over farm considerably in this match up here hoping that the opponent doesn't make a catch onto our body sand but even if they do actually it wouldn't be too bad because body sand is double resisted by the dust clops but the opponent gets a boost with the night slash so we are kind of just throwing these charge moves as soon as possible back to back body sams takes out the prime ape and we make it to another body slam up against the dust clops this is double resisted damage but it takes out the shadow dust clops and we're able to take that game into the next game, we see Pikachu Libre into a Shadow Golbat. And once again, I do not have the middle Pokemon for this team. So we've just got a Gothitelle in the uh, in the graphic here. But it is a Gotharita, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, I think that's how it's pronounced anyways. But we are going to come in. I assume we've got some decent bulk here. So we're going to let an X Scissor go through. And that is some decent bulk, not going to lie. We're going to shield the next one. Unfortunately, that would definitely take us out. Kind of core broken by the charge bug, unfortunately. But we're going to go for the side beam, which is not a very good charge move there. But we're only making it to one move, so I guess it doesn't really matter. And we do, we do grab a shield. The opponent's able to Volt Switch farm us down. Hopefully, we put them into range. But we can Confusion farm them down with our Galarian Mr. Mime. And we do get that farm down. Now, let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to come back in with the Golbat here. We can go for a triple axle. Probably going to grab a shield, but also ramp up our attack. No, the opponent lets that go through, and they've got a Vigoroth in the back, so... I think we're looking pretty good here. Are we going to shield this up? No, it's the Body Sam and it takes us out. But we can come in with our Pikachu Libre. And despite only being 1,046 CP, these Flying Presses are absolutely going to chunk. We grab the shield with the first one. Going to go for Flying Press number two. And from this range, it actually KOs the Vigor off. And we're able to take that game. In the next game, we got a Charmeleon in the lead up against Vigor off, of course. And we are going to see us no shield the first move. It's just a body slam, so we can tank that. We barely make it to a fire punch, so not the best energy generation here. But we should hopefully grab a shield from the opponent, and we do grab that shield. We're now going to come in with a Razor Leaf Ivysaur. So we are going to be able to tank this fairly well. Ivysaur got some decent bulk, slightly bulkier than the Venusaur. And we are able to Razor Leaf farm them all the way down. Now the opponent comes in with a Dartrix. This isn't looking too good for us. Hopefully the opponent just lets this Sludge one go through. And the opponent does no shield. And now we are going to see the opponent coming with a charge move of their own. They're going to go for a Sea Bomb double resisted. We actually tank that. And now they swap into a Galarian Linoon. So... 
We are going to shield the first move as the opponent is going to go for a body slam. We should live a body slam fairly well. I can see we're actually slightly under leveled. Not really sure why. We have double moved this war total, so you might as well just power it up all the way. But either way, we're going to go for an aqua jet. Aqua jet is an awful charge move. It does grab the shield though, and we should be able to just shield this move up, go for an ice beam, and from this range, even with a slightly lower CP than is what uh, than what's recommended, we should be able to KO with the ice beam from this range, and we do. And we're now going to swap into our Ivysaur, get the Razor Leaf farm down and take that game. But into this game, we see Laron into Vigoroth, so awful lead. We're going to swap into Duosion here, and we're going to have to shield this up. Duosion is fairly glassy. I think the... What's the... Uh, What's the first stage called? Solosis. Solosis is even glassier, but then Reuniclus is uh, slightly bulkier. But either way, the opponent comes in with a Chansey. We are resisting these Zen headbutts though, which is quite nice for us. And this should just be a Psychic, so we can let this go through. Doesn't do too much damage, but I mean, we're also not dealing much damage to the Chansey. We're gonna go for a Side Shock. We are running Hidden Power. I've got no clue if it's Fighting, Fire, Bug, whatever. Um, Maybe the person that did submit this has told me and I just didn't read it, but either way, we are going to see the opponent is going to go for another charge move here. They don't think they can farm us all the way down, so we're happy to let the Psychic go through. Laron can come in and fully farm them down, but this will take absolutely ages to do so, so I'm not sure if we will just farm to 100 energy and go for a Body Sand, but let's see. The opponent is going to go for another Psychic, really doesn't do much damage at all, and we are going to farm to nearly 100 energy, go for a Body Sand here. We're going to undercharge it though, I think that's a bit unnecessary because I mean we're still not gonna be able to take them out with these metal claws until they make it to another charge move so yeah we could have just probably fully charged that body Sam but either way we're now gonna swap into our girder there banking all the energy and the opponent comes in with a charge bug we can just full send the stone edge here and stone edge from this range is gonna nearly one shot them we are going to Shield up our Gurdir as the opponent's going to come back in with the Vigoroth. We can make it to a Brick Break and we win the CMP tie as well, which is absolutely huge for us. Brick Break, going to grab the final shield and now we can just go for the back to back rock sides from our lair on. The opponent goes for a Body Slam that actually doesn't quite take us out there, but it doesn't matter. We've got so much energy. We're actually going for Body Slam, which I don't think it matters here as two Body Slams will still KO, but should have gone for the rock side as it does do more damage. But either way, Body Slam number two takes out the Vigoroth and we're able to take that game. Into next game, we've got a triple middle stage evolution evolution grass starter team. We're leading into charger bugs, so not ideal for a team of grass types, but we are going to shield the first move as the opponent goes for the X's. Uh, we are running Body Sam, which is decent in terms of dealing neutral coverage and spammy coverage as well. Body Sam going to do some decent damage there, and we are going to let the next x go through. x does get us fairly low, but these Volt Switches are resisted. It's not doing too much to us. We can go for another Body Sam, and if they stay in, we can make it to another body slam before the opponent can farm us down or fire off a charge move and the opponent is actually able to just barely live that so unfortunately we do just barely uh, lose the one shield scenario but we come in with our bay leaf get the farm down and bay leaf has quite a lot of bulk here the opponent going to come in with their vigor off we can go for a grass knot but the opponent does just barely outpace us to a body slam body slam not going to do too much damage there as we are very bulky as i mentioned we're now going to go for the grass knot and grass knot is going to deal big damage to the vigor off actually a lot more damage than i was expecting we can now let the next body slam go through we still live this we're going to farm them down with the magical leaf and go for another grass knot this is probably going to grab the final shield for the opponent and now we can just come in with our dartrix and we will be able to just safely shield this up ice punch would be double super effective that should go for nice ash there so probably not running it or just baiting either way it doesn't matter we can very comfortably make it to the brave bird taking out the prime ape and we're able to take that game so going into the next game, we see breaks in into Haunter. So not ideal. Going to save swap into our Poliwell. And the opponent's going to respond with a Togetic. So we're going to go for a Scald here. Scald, of course, does have that 50% chance to debuff their attack. And we are not able to get it on the first go, unfortunately. So going to let this move go through. Aerial Ace, not going to do too much damage here. We probably should throw the Scald straight away. But we're actually going to over farm. We're still going to live this. But I think if we got the debuff there, the opponent would not be able to farm us down if they end up shielding the Scald here. So they do shield the Scald. We do get the debuff but they can farm us down but either way we can come in with our breaks in once we wait out the switch clock here so that's what we're going to do they're probably going to be running ancient power it is very common in this meta but they are debuffed so that only does about well okay they just boosted their self again so we're gonna have to shield this for sure but hopefully we can just ember farm them down from this range it will be very close 
but we are able to get the Ember Farm down, and the opponent comes in with a Dragonair, so they're probably going to shield straight away, all Dragonairs do, but we have back-to-back -back Side Shock, so we can throw the second one straight away, and this Side Shock will get them fairly low already into the Yellow Health range. We're going to swap straight away into our Frogadier, and the opponent comes back in with the Haunter. We're going to have to over-farm here, but they go for a Dark Pulse, which is quite a spicy move to run on the Haunter. Not really sure why you would run it, but I, I suppose it is neutral damage up against these normal types, but you've also got Sludge Bomb and Ice, Be uh, Ice Punch to throw, but either way, we're able to barely make it to the Aerial Ace up against the Dragonair, KOing the Dragonair, and we're able to take that game. Into next game, we see a Weeping Bell into a Vigoroth, so we're going to stay in. We are resisting the counter damage, although Weeping Bell is a fairly classy Pokemon. We're going to go for the Sludge Bomb, dealing huge damage. We now swap into our Gerda, and the opponent's going to bank a ton of energy. Swap into their Golbat, but do they know about the Stone Edge coverage? They don't! It nearly one-shots them, and we can tank a Poison Fang from this range, so they have to go for Shadow Ball. But it is just a Poison Fang. We live that, and we also come out with a Brick Break loaded. So probably going to grab a Shield from the Vigoroth as well. So that's huge. The opponent does have quite a lot of energy on their Vigoroth. But we're going to come in with the Pupitar. The opponent goes for the extra counter there. And we snipe them with the Bite damage. And the opponent just concedes the match there. So going into the next battle, we see Porygon 2 going to save swap straight away into our Dartrix. And the opponent comes in with a Haunter. Now we are going to bait with a Seed Bomb. The opponent already had a charge move, but it's just a Shadow Punch, which we can comfortably live. Should have gone for the Ice Punch if they are running it. But likewise, we shouldn't have baited there as the opponent lets that go through. Although we're dealing quite a lot of damage with the Magical Leaf here. We're actually going to shield the Shadow Punch and go for the Magical Leaf farm down. So we just took out a Haunter with only resisted damage there. We're now going to full send the Brave Bird, dealing huge damage to the Dragonair. At this point, we can come in with our Porygon 2. The opponent's going to swap into their Vigoroth, but we can now make it to a Tri-Attack. And if we get the debuff here which we are going to get. We can just stay in. We can live a body stand from this range, probably make it to another tri-attack, and hopefully just get another debuff here. But even if we don't, we can then just swap into our Shadow Magma, and we should be looking pretty good. We do get the attack and defense drop once again. We can actually just no-shield this, although Rockside would still do a lot of damage, so we play it safe. We use our shield. They make it to another charge move, but it should just be a body Sam. It is the body Sam. They weren't going to swap back into their Dragonair. Honestly, I would have just Karate Chop farm them down, but we go for the Fire Punch, taking them out, and we can just Karate Chop, farm down the Vigoroth, and we're able to take that game. So going into the next battle, we see Crocolore into a Charger Bug. So a very good lead matchup. The opponent going to safe swap into their goal bat, and we respond with our Shadow Kadabra. This is just going to be a Poison Fang, I do believe. But we're going to shield it anyways. They debuff our defense. I mean, we had barely any defense anyway, so what does it matter? We are going to get the full Confusion Farm down. They come back in with the Charger Bug. We're going to go for a Shadow Ball here, throwing as late as possible, hoping to force the opponent into throwing on CMP, but they don't throw. And we're going to come back in with our Crocolore. Now, we can just let this move go through. Discharge is going to do some decent damage there. They make it to another charge move. At this point, we should be shielding because Discharge would KO, but they've got a co uh, sorry a Hakamoto in the bag, and we've got Disarming Voice, which is going to hit for double super effective damage. We've got back-to-back -back moves, so they only had one shield remaining, so this will connect. It nearly KOs. We can Dragon Ref, snipe them with our Seedra, and we're able to Dragon Ref farm down the Charger Bug, and we're able to take that game. Into next game, we've got a kind of like triple shell theme team, but we're going to lead with our Pupitar into Primate. Awful lead, so we're going to swap into our Shell Gone. Going to shield this up as the opponent goes for an Ice Punch, and looking at that Dragon Breath damage, we're going to commit to a full Dragon Breath farm down, and we get that farm down, which is huge, but they come in with a Vigoroth, so not really anywhere for our Pupitar to go. We're going to go for a Twister. Twister, unfortunately, not a very good move, as I mentioned in the previous battle. That had a Shell Gone, but we do grab a Shield, and we get them into the Yellow Health range already. Now, Whirlipede is certainly not powered up all the way. I believe it gets to like the 1200s, but we're going to swap, make a really nice catch. And what I like about this is Pupitar actually resists all the typical charge moves and the opponent swaps out of that matchup into their... I'm not really sure why they did that. They could have just stayed in with the Vigoroth. But either way, we are going to shield the first move coming from the Charger Bug. They do make it to another x Scissor, but we've got some decent bulk here. We can live that, and we can go for the Ancient Power. Ancient Power, probably not quite going to take them out from this range. Actually, maybe it would have done. But either way, we grab the final shield. The opponent doesn't commit to the farm down there. They're going to throw their Charge Move. x Scissor will be taking us out. We can come in with our Whirlipede. We're going to fire off the Charge Move. I don't think we really need to. 
but we will be taking out the charger bug and now the opponent will actually make it to a charge move if this is a rock side we should just barely live it and we do live it we make it to the sludge bomb and from this range does it ko the vigoroth yes it does and we're able to take that game so going into the next battle once again i don't have the gotharita so we've got gothatel in the image and also i don't have a clang either so we've got a cling clang instead but here the opponent is core broken by the gotharita here as we safe swap into it they come in with their prime ape not a great idea from the opponent but we can now go for a charge move i believe this is a psi beam or actually that might be psi shock i'm not sure i think it's only got exclusively psychic type charge moves so that's why not a lot of people are running it, because it does have some decent bulk here. But the opponent goes for an avalanche. They take us out. We come in with the Quilladin. And honestly, I'd probably just sacrifice here. But no, we're going to use our final shield on the avalanche. They're now going to swap into their Golbat, and we're going to come in with our Clang. So, unfortunately, this Shadow Ball is going to do quite a lot of damage. They're actually going to go for the Poison Fang there. Debuff our defense. We farm to the back-to-back -back moves. But if this is the Shadow Ball, we're already debuffed. Shadow Ball actually doesn't quite take us out. We are kind of bulky here, not going to lie. We're now going to go for a Vice Grip, I believe that is, which is an awful move. And unfortunately, the opponent calls the bait there. But we go for a second Vice Grip, and the opponent's still letting that go through. At this point, they're still going to throw a Charge move, though, and this will be taking us out. But we can come in, and the opponent comes back in with their Pilo Swine. Going to farm two near back-to-back -back Body Sams here. First one grabs the shield. We make it to the second Body Sam, and even though the Gold Bat is going to double resist the Vine Whip damage, we should just be able to fast move farm them down from this range we're able to do so and we're able to take that game and into i think the final battle of this video we lead dartrix into vigoroff so pretty decent lead matchup for us of course rockside will hit for super effective damage but the opponent's going to swap out into their goal bat we're going to full send a brave bird it connects and now we swap into our fracture and we can fully drag and tell farm them down before the opponent even throws a charge move which is pretty huge for us we're now going to go for a dragon claw dragon claw going to be grabbing the first shield from the opponent we're happy to let the Fracture go down here. Body Sam won't quite take us out, so they get one extra counter in without taking any Dragon Tail damage, which is quite nice for the opponent. Not too good for us. They're going to go for the Rock Side. We do tank that, and now they come in with a Dust Clops. We are once again going to full send the Brave Bird here. Probably going to grab a Shield this time. We do grab the Shield, and now we can swap into our Shadow Haunter, and Shadow Haunter is absolutely deadly when there are zero Shields in play on the opponent's end. We're going to Shield up the Fire Punch here. Going to go for the Ice Punch straight away. This actually isn't going to KO, so... Probably could have overfarmed there, and the opponent still makes it to a charge move anyway. So, yeah, definitely should have overfarmed in this matchup, but it doesn't matter. We will just barely outpace this Vigoroth. They had to go for the Rock Side 2 KO, but an Ice Punch will be taken out the Vigoroth, and we're able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.